So we will cover this whole concept of management of acute facial injuries in two sort of points, right? We'll go to the absolute basics, and then we'll take one or two one case in each special situation. And at the end of it, uh, you should be fairly ready to take on the cases which Mandar is going to show later. So the first basic thing is that in this child who has come to me with an injury, does there a facial injury actually exist? Okay. So is there a facial injury? So look at this X-ray of a roughly 11-year-old uh, boy, and you will see that okay, probably there is a small fracture of the ulnar styloid process. Now this child. Happened to have come later for a shoulder pathology, and then he gave a history of some wrist issues, and then they realized, looking back, that actually there was a facial injury of the distal radius, which has led to this form of eccentric growth arrest. Now, if you ask me honestly, if I had picked up this facial injury, would I have been able to avoid it? That is a plus-minus factor, but definitely it helps you prognosticate and guide the patient. Now, sometimes you have. real violent trauma so you have seen the diaphyseal fracture you seen the longitudinal fracture of the diaphysis extending into the physis but after the hardware removal you may discharge the patient without actually remembering you know after the period of 2 3 months that this is something of big bother and eventually you will have probably a angular or a linear deformity resulting from the fracture so remember that there was a facial injury and one of the most common places where we can miss is an ankle sprain so what we would actually presume that you know the child has a subtle metaphyseal distal fibular fracture uh, we may be actually missing a fibular facial injury and the fibula physis closes really late at as late as 18 to 20 years okay and therefore to sort of pay attention to the fact that a fibular facial injury can actually exist is very important so now from is there a facial injury i have identified my facial injury now do i intervene or do i observe right so now this is coming back again to the fibular facial injury so this is a fibular facial injury in like a very late age and then if i miss it it can lead to something like this so whereby this sort of impingement in the ankle can actually come about so identifying and managing the facial injury whether i am going to merely observe or i am going to immobilize whether i am going to reduce and immobilize is also very important now one more case so this is a distal radius facial injury you can see the x ray this is a clinical picture of a 18 month old boy so now the boy is very young there are is there any other symptom is there a median nerve symptom am i going to damage this physis by close reduction so do i intervene do i put a slab what do i do so from identifying intervention we come to what my intervention will be will it be a close reduction under anesthesia just a cast or fix with a wire so in the last patient we saw we saw that the entire distal radial physis was on the top it looked like what is like the type 1 salter harris but if you look at the follow up x ray it looks more like a salter type 2 salter harris type 2 distal radius and we had close reduced this fracture you can see a central sort of tenting here so we don't know whether our force applied in getting this reduction probably caused sort of more damage than what uh, what was there uh, was this a a fracture which could have been left could we have applied less force achieved less reduction and left the patient so with that we come to a rule which is called as 90 10 0 rule so we should apply for close reduction of any facial injury 90% traction only 10% translation and zero torsion because as avi told you that there is a possibility that the injury may be in one layer of the physis by applying torsion we will convert a type 1 type 2 into a type 3 type 4 injury microscopically the fracture line will go through all the layers of the physis and may have a higher chance of a complication so similarly as this child grows up you have a facial injury so what options do you have so in another patient we used what is called as the uh, transfacial pin so there we remove the transfacial pin here and on a follow up we have to follow this patient up longer to see whether there is any evidence of injury or treatment related growth issues so now from wire fixation we find out whether just wires are enough to fix my physis or is there some place where i definitely will require screw 
so this is one condition which is a salter harris type 3 of the distal tibial physis epiphysis where we are tempted most of us are tempted to pass a percute wire but here because it's a injury which has distraction forces to it we require to apply a compressive force by passing a percutaneous screw and if we can we should also confirm with an arthrogram that our reduction was good if we do not do this the chances of a delayed union non union and a facial arrest is very high also when we are using screws in these type 4 type of injuries we should always remember that one screw is going to be in the metaphysis and one screw is going to be in the epiphysis then we are safe we are on either sides a little away from the physis we should not be coming too close to the physis or crossing the physis now extending the basis basics of facial injury so first let's see the age just listen to me through i as i go through this slide so younger your patient the higher the chance of him getting a type 1 and type 2 injury okay so our mind would say are it is better to get type 1 type 2 chhota bachchu hai bach gaya but that is not what happens because the amount of facial disruption is fairly high and prognostically our manner of treating the patient may get wrong and therefore we may cause a growth arrest now the older patients in the syndicate that is between 10 to 15 get more of type 3 type 4 these we know anyway we have to do completely anatomic reduction and fixation right now if growth arrest then we have to assess the implications as per age so there may be a growth deformity which you may feel will actually improve with a younger age or it may worsen with it so we have to apply our growth arrest problems and implications as per the age of the patient now if there is an angular deformity in the joint then is it is it got a progressive impact value or is it going to remain static and if there are intra articular issues especially in the late acute presenters then what do we do okay so this is all we have to think and the further cases that will be discussed in the session will bring it bring it about bring it clearly to you so this uh, sort of a busy chart just to show that more common are distal radials distal tibia what we actually would treat actively distal femur and they are mostly type 1 and type 2 only the distal tibia is mostly type 3 injuries so once we keep this chart in front of us no it helps us sort of understand where is the injury and what is the most likely type of injury pattern so it helps us understand the type of injury at every particular joint this will tell us the very obvious that all growth issues around the knee have a huge contribution so we have to be more alert more aware treat it with greater sincerity and follow up the patient more rigidly when it is a distal femur and a upper tibial growth plate injury now let's go to the special situations so here we had a very grossly displaced upper tibial facial injury a type 2 bordering type 1 type of injury and very lot of a lot of force was executed almost like an intrafocal reduction so now think about it could we have left it alone this was a 6 year old child or is this okay was there any other way in this reduction could have come could we have somehow applied this 90% traction 10% translation no torsion no pressure rule so these are difficult injuries to deal with today if you ask me i would have probably attempted a gentle close reduction and left the child alone so cross k wires were put that were also transfacial and on a shorter follow up the patient looked good but we do not know what has happened on a longer follow up now special case 2 so you see this injury this is a dis disturbed distal tibial physis looks like a salter harris type 2 and the surgeon has attempted a close reduction and fixed it now pay attention to this portion which has remained open anteriorly so that is called as ppe which is not our protection equipment but it is like a uh, trapped periosteum so it's a periosteal entrapment and which leads to a ppc which means premature facial closure so your end point of facial reductions when you are doing close reduction should be like a nice jhatka reduction means you should feel it has come comfortably without any feeling of any soft tissue interposition and you don't require lot of force to hold that reduction besides the periosteum in the distal tibia the nerves and the vessel is also known to get entrapped 
so in this particular area the most special case is a triplane injury if that patient was 10 years old if this patient is 13 years old then it leads to what is called as triplane so this is one of the full only indications of getting a ct scan done in this area confirmed indication of ct scan and the fracture exists in two planes that is why we should specifically know this entity of triplane fracture now special case 3 were a violently displaced uh, type 1 distal femur physis this required open reduction because all the synovial tissue had got entrapped here so we for us to know when to shift from a closed reduction to an open reduction and we fixed it with a single transfacial pin because it was stable after reduction similarly we have a distal radius injury so we reduced it was shorter aris type 2 so one option is you can take a wire in this metaphyseal area but we went through the transphyseal area at a one year follow up both these patients were doing well so we sort of reviewed whether transphyseal pins are okay so transphyseal pins are okay if you pass them to the center of the physis by a single attempt and a very small thin wire should be passed preferably with the help of low speed drills and the physial damage generally occurs more by our treatment then by the injury so what i mean is more by the attempt of reduction rather than uh, 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 by the k wire okay and we should remove the wires early if at all we are compelled to pass a transphyseal pin to avoid pin track infection which actually leads to more problems so this is supported by these review of literatures so if you just traverse 7% of the cross sectional area of the growth plate you should not have any problem so final thoughts remember the 90 10 0 rule apply 90% traction 10% translation and virtually no torsion or any other form of force the two year follow up rule that is minimum any facial injury you detect should be followed up for a minimum period of two years before you say that there is probably going to be no growth expect growth related issues here so know what to expect means then you will be able to diagnose and treat your patients know your implications of your actions you know am i doing a violent close reduction is it better to leave it alone can i pass a transphyseal pin be familiar with that and be familiar with special situations like triplane or uh, with traps of tissues in between to prevent further complications that's it. thanks a lot mm -hmm.